One of the things that the kinematic equations allow us to do is to find the height of an object without using a measuring tape. So suppose you like to cliff or bridge jump in your spare time and you want to know the height of a cliff before you make the jump. So suppose this is the cliff that you want to know the height of, so we want to know the height which we often write as the delta y, and this is going to be the height above the base of the cliff, and this is going to be our coordinate system here where the up direction is going to be the positive y direction. And the easiest way to measure this height without a measuring stick is to basically take something that's relatively heavy and small. So one of the reasons that you want to use a small object is because it will reduce the amount of air resistance on that object and the reason you want to use something heavy is because that increases the object's inertia which decreases the tendency of the air to slow it down as it's falling. And then what you want to do is you want to take this object and release it from rest because you want to know what the object's initial velocity is. And then what's going to happen is the force of gravity is going to accelerate this rock in the downward direction increasing its velocity, and the thing we're not going to know is what the object's final velocity is right before it hits the ground, although we can calculate it. Now in order to measure the height of the cliff, we're going to need to know at least the time it takes for this rock to go from way up here to hitting the water. And in this case, let's say it takes about two seconds for this rock to go from this point here to this point right here. So let's first summarize everything that we know and then figure out how we apply the kinematic equations to this problem. So the initial velocity of this object is going to be zero meters per second. And then it's going to speed up or accelerate until it reaches some final velocity, which we don't know. But we do know that it will take two seconds between the time you release it from your hand and it hitting the water. We don't know what the height of the cliff is, but that is what we're trying to calculate. And we do know how much the object is being sped up by the force of gravity. In this case, gravity is going to speed it up by 9.8 meters per second every single second that this object's falling. So let's take a look at the kinematic equations. One of our kinematic equations says that the final velocity of this object equals whatever the initial velocity is, plus the acceleration times the time over which this object's accelerating. Another one of our kinematic equations says that the final velocity of this object squared equals the initial velocity of the object squared, plus two times the acceleration over the distance which this object's accelerating, which in this case I'm using delta y because it's falling in the downward direction. And another one of our kinematic equations says that the height of the cliff equals whatever the initial velocity of the rock is times the time plus one half the object's acceleration times the square of the time over which this object's accelerating. Now in this case I could use this equation to find the final velocity but I'm not looking for the final velocity I'm looking for the height of the cliff so I'm not going to use this equation. The next equation says that if I know the final velocity the initial velocity and how fast it's accelerating I can figure out the height of the cliff. But the problem is I don't know what the final velocity of the rock is yet, although I could use this equation to find it. The simplest way, and one of the reasons that we release this rock from rest, is because I can use this equation to find the height of the cliff because I know the initial velocity of the rock is zero, so this entire term is zero, and then I know how fast this object's speeding up, and I know the time over which this object's falling for. So to find the height of the cliff, I'm going to say that the height equals one half the object's acceleration times the time over which this object's falling squared. Now in this case, I know that it's the force of gravity accelerating this object, so the acceleration term is going to be negative 9.8 meters per second per second, or meters per second squared, and I know it's falling for a total time of two seconds. So when I simplify this expression, I get one half of negative 9.8 meters per second squared times two seconds squared works out to be four seconds squared. Now one of the things that you should see at this point is this squared second term cancels out with this squared second term. And then when we take one half of negative 9.8 times 4, we get negative 19.6 meters. Now notice the negative sign. In this case, the negative sign indicates that the rock has fallen negative 19.6 meters, or is 19 meters below the drop point. So if we look back up at the cliff, we're assuming that this point right here is y initial, and that's going to be zero meters, and this point right down here, right before it hits the water, is going to be negative 19.6 meters. So this is just 19.6 meters below this point right here. 